Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Abbas Ali, a full-time orthopedic surgeon, a faculty of orthopedics and also a part-time YouTuber. Now let me apologize for my voice in advance. I've not been feeling well since the last few days and I am sure I know what it is. But since this video had to be done, I'm doing it. Let's get on with it. I hope you have already seen part one of this video. It talks about how you should take care of yourself in the weeks leading up to the exam. If you have followed those tips, by now uh, you should be in a healthy state of body and mind. In this video, I will talk about how you need to prepare for the exam day itself. And no, I'm not going to talk about another must-do revision list or something else. I'm sure you already have several of those by now. My plan is to talk about all the other details that we think are not important and tend to ignore them. But I feel they play an important role in how we perform on the exam day itself. But before I start, I want to once again take a moment and congratulate all of you on reaching this far and not giving up on the way. Preparation is like running a long race. If you have gotten this far in the race, I'm sure you have what it takes to finish it now. Let me share my experiences of writing several important exams to try and make this last mile easier for you. So the first thing I would like to talk about is the night before the exam. Now a lot of people get super stressed the night before the exam. They suddenly start to panic and feel that they have not prepared enough. So they revise and revise late into the night and disturb their sleep. Some people on the other hand decide that they need to relax by watching a movie or hanging out with friends. And by doing this, they think they can distract themselves. This is not a great idea either as you might get tired or regret wasting those hours. So this is what I think we should be doing. Just stick to your routine, stay home, revise a little, watch TV or listen to music for a bit. Hit the bed an hour before your regular time. It's natural to be anxious, so you need more time to fall asleep. If you can't fall asleep, don't panic. Just meditate or practice relaxation exercise till you actually fall asleep. Now, I'm sure we all know someone who rolls straight out of bed and comes to the exam. I mean, forget talking about taking a bath. These people don't even comb their hair or brush their teeth. But this is not the best policy because you need both to be physically comfortable and feel confident before the exam. So follow your grooming routine and you will feel fresh and comfortable in the exam. And this will put you in the right frame of mind. I I'm not saying go all out and apply deodorant all over your body, but just the basic essentials. In fact, just treat your exam day morning like any other morning. Don't do anything special or extraordinary. Treat it just like any regular day with the same boring routine because routines are comforting and will help you stay calm. I know a lot of people who take energy drinks on the day of the exam. They are somehow convinced they need that extra energy on that day. And when they see their friends consuming them, they feel they need to keep up. Well, this is not true because your body will already be in fight or flight mode before the exam and pumping adrenaline through your blood vessels. Now the extra energy and stimulation that you put in will make you more jittery and restless. More importantly, if you're too stimulated, you cannot concentrate properly and might end up making mistakes. So unless you take energy drinks regularly, avoid them on the day of the exam. If you do take energy drinks regularly, then follow your routine on the exam day as well. After which, drop me a message and let's discuss how to kick this harmful habit. But what about tea and coffee? If you regularly have tea or coffee in the morning, have some. Otherwise, if you don't, please don't experiment today. This is important. Please start early and reach the exam hall a good one hour before the stipulated time. This year, it's going to be very different with all the necessary COVID precautions in place, like the staggered entry, shields, face masks, and extra frisking, who knows what. I have a post on my Instagram handle with all the necessary details. Link is there in the description in case you don't want to miss it. Apart from that, when you're waiting outside the exam hall, Try not to talk to anyone that can possibly stress you out. 
Stay away from all the legends and toppers of your batch and college. If you have anxious parents accompanying you to the exam, I suggest staying away from them too. You do not need any kind of extra pressure on the exam day. If you happen to overhear someone talk about something that you can't remember or can't recall, don't panic. Your brain is in the processing mode. It is turning on. And when something is turning on, you're unable to access it. So don't worry about it. There is absolutely no point in testing your memory right before entering the exam hall. Give it some time. You will be able to recall it in the exam. Well, now you're in the exam hall. This is it. Let the hunger games begin. If you feel a surge of anxiety, that's fine. That's just our body preparing for the challenge. Just like the engine is revving up before the race. Just take a few deep breaths and start reading the questions. If you come across a question in the exam that is from a topic that you have read and are unable to recall, don't panic because trust me, if you start panicking and getting anxious, this will snowball into something more dangerous because after two or three such difficult questions, you will be unable to answer even the simplest of questions. You will start making those easy, silly mistakes. So don't be catastrophic in your thoughts. Don't start thinking, I'm done. Sharma ji was right. I'm an absolute loser. Don't waste time imagining how your life is going to be a disaster. Nothing of that sort has happened. Just snap out of it and keep checking the next question. If you stay calm, the chances are after a bunch of questions, you will be able to recall the answer and at that moment, quickly go back and mark it. Listen, sometimes you get extremely unlucky and start from a bad patch of questions. You will face a series of difficult questions and you can't seem to get the answer. Honestly, that's when your heart starts to sink. This is when I want you to recall this. You need to be brave and carry on without losing hope. Just tell yourself that this is a bad patch and you just started off with the wrong set. Besides, those questions are going to be equally hard for everyone. See, when I wrote my entrance exam, the first 12 questions were absolutely new to me. I had no idea what the answers were. It was a horrible feeling. It was almost like the end of the world for me. But I calmed myself down and carried on. See, for me, winners are the people who muster the courage to read the 13th question with the same amount of enthusiasm, energy and hope as the first question. And that is the probable reason I'm here in front of you today. I mustered the courage. I fought it. I fought the fear. So please treat each new question like a brand new day. Don't take the confusion and baggage of the previous question to the new one. If you need a minute to reset your mind, do it. Take a minute to take a deep breath and remind yourself to stay strong. Trust me, it works. See, there can be or probably will be technical difficulties in your exam. Sometimes the mouse doesn't respond or the screen turns off. Don't panic. Immediately get up and alarm the examiner. Ask them for help. And if the process is taking time, stay calm. Keep telling yourself it's going to be OK. It's going to be OK. You have to accommodate for these kinds of distractions. Sometimes there can be annoying sounds like a loud fan or distractions from the traffic. Keep bringing yourself back to the question and don't let these things bug you down. I can truly understand your pain. This is the real battle in the exam hall, uh, bringing your focus back to the question. This is the real fight between the distraction and the focus. You have to fight it and win it. Now, this is the most important part of this video, answering the MCQs. The first question that I usually get is how many answers to mark? See, the best and the most honest answer is as many as safely possible because you can't get a decent rank by marking less. That's why you can't be very conservative in your approach. You have to take risks. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to be on the offense. Let's look at it logically. Simple mathematics. One correct question gives you four marks and you lose one mark if you get it wrong. So if you take a risk and say attempt 10 questions and only get three out of them correct and seven absolutely wrong, you will still be in profit. So does that mean should you attempt all questions? No, absolutely not. Just follow this rule. If you can rule out two options, go ahead and definitely mark it. If you can rule out only one option, look for one more hint to rule out another option and then go ahead and mark it. 
But if you are unable to rule out any option, then in that case, leave it. So basically, if you cannot narrow it down somehow to two options, leave it. But if you can definitely narrow it down to two options, even if you're not 100% sure, please mark it. And now the most important thing among all of this, the most important thing is to trust yourself. See, you have been training yourself for this exam for a very, very long time. And so this gut feeling that you get for an answer is the result of that experience you have garnered. So trust your judgment. And once you mark an option, don't think too much about it and move ahead. A lot of the students mark the correct answer the first time around and they start to overthink it. And that is when they change it to the wrong option. If in your experience, you have been a poor guesser, then don't guess as much. But if your guessing game is strong, please by all means, take a calculated risk. Marrow Grand Test would have trained you well in this regard. They have that special guest tracking feature, right? If you enable that feature, it tells you if you're a good guesser or not. Sometimes you will not know anything about the question. In that case, it's best if you just leave it. These kind of questions will be there because it's not possible to know each and everything in the exam. If it's new to you, it's probably new for everyone. Now the eighth and the last thing that I want to talk about is time management. Time management is not starting slow and accelerating at the end. Time management is consistently managing your speed across all the questions, giving each question the same amount of time and respect, especially this year, because we are expecting a lot of long form clinical case vignettes. You need to be very conscious about the time you spend with each question. A simple rule of thumb is to do 100 questions in one and a half hours or a 50 50 questions in 45 minutes and that consistent speed should be the same from the start to finish. Keep checking yourself every half an hour if you're on track or not. If you're slow, it's time to put the pedal to the metal. So in summary, the first thing is on the exam day morning, don't do anything unusual. Stick to your daily routine. Let your subconscious feel it's just another regular day. No energy drinks, don't overstimulate your already hyper brain. Outside the exam hall, when you're waiting for the exam, protect yourself from all kinds of negative people and triggers. Number four, in the exam hall, you will come across distractions and annoying sounds. You may have technical difficulties. Stay focused, don't blank out, don't lose track. Don't panic when you come across a bad patch or bad series of questions. Soldier through it. The next question will be better. Mark as many questions as possible, be on the offense, take the risks, get out of your comfort zone and there will still be questions you have no idea about. It's okay to leave them. Manage your time consistently from the first question to the last. In the end, remember that to perform well on this exam, there is honestly no shortcut or a cheat sheet. All those things can only take you so far. What really takes you to the top is your persistent hard work with adequate knowledge and vigorous revisions. It will be your ability to think logically and most importantly, most importantly, staying calm in the eye of the storm. It's like this beautiful musical orchestra where all the instruments play together to make beautiful music. And you end this music with a perfect crest. This exam is the crest of your music and it sounds beautiful. So here I am guys, wishing you all the best. I have a feeling you will do well. Now go out there and make all of us proud. I will see you on the other side. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.